anybody hear me? Fedi, Fedi, welcome. Please, can you hear me? If you can hear me, please, you confirm. If you can hear me, please, you do confirm. Thank you to everybody coming on board now. Please kindly confirm if you can get me. Don't mind me. Uh, I'm going to explain why I'm coming out. Coming out late and uh, in fact, I'm, I'm surprised that it has worked at last. It's taken me uh, the past one hour and almost 30 minutes as I was struggling to come online today. And a whole bunch of technical problems that I cannot explain came over, and uh, both all my gadgets, all my my electronic devices were not working. So uh, finally, it it has started working, and I can only thank God for it. I can only seriously thank God. I can see a lot of people coming on. Welcome everybody. Welcome everybody. Um, please kindly. Wow, watching from Baminda, my brother. Wow. Uh, please kindly indicate if you can hear my voice and hear it well before I proceed to the topic of today. Uh, okay, DJ Stano says he can hear my voice. Okay. Okay, thank you everybody. Uh, today I was uh, programming to talk about making the best use of uh, the holidays and then about opportunities of learning even online. I think it's, it has a link. Uh, but just before then, I will uh, beg your permission to be able to, to, to use a bit of pigeon for some personal reasons before I will come back to English. I beg when I all come, all man welcome. Uh, I be glad as soon as you watch. I just want beg for use the opportunity for clarify one or two things, especially about uh, this whole idea of being online. Because plenty of time, then people they think say if you only gain something from online, if you only learn from online, if you get some big big book demo, some big big certificate then. But we get for understand say uh, the life so no be now about certificate then. Life then about which we you feel you be able for over for uh, for the good of the people around you. Life now about how you you feel make people they may they be happy. The, the way we you feel create impact. The way we you feel make and so that uh, your society feel they remember you. They feel they remember you for inside good prayer. Because if uh, as we plenty so for inside the world. If God be like not only one man, if we create not only the one man, but as God make you and He make me and He make other people them, like because He you know say we need each other, like He you know say I need you, you need me, and so we need each other before we feel be able to do the various things that we God is send we for come do. And one of the things I'm where I want back for talk, I say when we be online, we all man feel learn online, all man feel learn online. No matter whether you get certificate for power, you know get a certificate and no nothing. The most important thing I think where you feel the small thing where you feel learn and wait where you feel use and for do for help yourself and for help the people the way they be around you. And but because we didn't have for the uh, digital uh, period for generation for digital generation, we, we get for understand say people that they mostly be very very busy online. But some of our younger people, them, some of our small, small brothers and small, small sisters, the way they, they join online now, now, so now I think say we stand a better place for the try to for talk for them for the advice them, because plenty of them or plenty of them, including me, I be one of the small, small brother. They, they, they pass, they, they spend a lot of time for online, but and when you want to see, you see the kind page them or group them with.
they go like they go join you don't understand say they most of the time where they go to spend online it not go be profitable so they go to use time for online where it not be profitable first of all even for them as individuals and then subsequently even for the family and for the community the small from the smallest community to the largest winner the world will be there for inside so so that and then because we get time and we get the the good luck say well technology don't come and it did everywhere if, if they write to villages i think say if i was more small then they come online now 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 a chance for we for the talk for the media no say for come for this thing then the facebook the person fix them the first person create them as me and you they talk for this so as we they come for the right writing there post picture they will give for no say some person they they, they get money for sake of auditing they will do so we if we come for day two we just do the thing the way they do they go just give money for the person we go back we will not be able for share thing they like this video they would ever share them for talk about thing the way with the person feed they will you know be no and then he learn I mean he help you for check some information he help you again for another way then it will be like say with the west now waste time for online way you know fine or it could be like say online the only place where you person they come snap picture can put them and sometimes you even put a smart and hackers they go can hack them or scam scammers and take them go to use and do some kind of thing where you don't even know so and the fine too will be very careful about who we accept online as friend because plenty of our younger people they don't fall victim they, uh, and they scammers or hackers they take when they see person will it be responsible online they feel carry a picture they go create some fake empty account then they invite people there, they look a list for people that they invite some young young people there, but they, they feel promise them things then where they know they exist. For example, say they want to make them maybe travel go white man country or this and that. And then our small then will fall inside trouble and then money will go. But we not be even the people the way they are they take pictures and be used. And one of these things that are shown now because of idleness where we are younger ones then be idle online. So now why the are the hope say the the way we are going to present today even if i change back language later on if he be able for help to me while younger people they know the kind of thing that if you do online for instance be able for gain personally and then for make community them around them may they also may they also gain and so one thing too yes uh, even for our younger people then because when people when people they make themselves available for for the try gather some information and share and we a very good thing and i think for for make and say me the next generation of people there at least if i share them with you today i know they beg say me you come back to me say thank you thank you i think say the best thank you if you give me and i say tomorrow me you know be able for see some information from some site you hide them if you be able for see i'm share them too i'll get them for when 100 and if when i want to go be get that hard for see i'm sure again it means they would already be able to get maybe 1000 people there and then they will continue the share and if you get a world we would not say man not the live now for yourself but man the live now for this for seeker the other people the way they day around here so that again if you day online and then you know person where they ever share information with you and you come right here sometimes just say hello or hi even no reply you you get for understand because we would always so as we watch the video now the use uh, online uh, for different different activity then sometimes they ever they will some per person just come online so therefore come check news and then we it be so busy you just leave some one activity where they do one will be very important rush come for check news go back for the eye if you write the hello you know back home you know always means say you know one talk for you and i even think say it be better and very much preferable say when you get your friend and person where you know say if he gets more information for give you and you get some question for asking you come when you write hello or you write good afternoon you write the thing where you get them for asking you i'll write the whole thing even if you long like wait you send them for you i, I think say when the person will be free and you see him you go surely read them and when you read them and you get reply for give you you go surely send you the reply so that may not be like say you would ever think all time say edit moment where you write person hello ego must answer you immediately because the online thing then they so you know say so all we would use facebook use whatsapp use other kind of thing there and they think that they really drain time because one thing we will get for don't i say uh, technology they create not only this application then but the one thing we you know be able for create and with only papa could be created at that time so even as they create more and more whatsapps more and more facebook's more and more uh, emos and vibers more and more or twitters time still being at 24 hours for inside one day and so we get for be uh, very very um i think time conscious so that uh, we 
even as we the share information with the share every other thing we get we we, we could be able for for no say people that they they now they overdo multitasking they overdo plenty thing at a time and person of you always get time every time for chat even if you don't get i know means you don't get person a time but now it now the number of things the way they it day on top table for that time and i hope say no matter the number of friends they will get them if person write you to relieve some message say brother or sister you feel let me do so so and so if you explain so so and so i sure i'll be very sure say when the person go get time it will reply you and you will read them out life will continue so i thank you na plenty i think so i will change back now i begin the talk for uh, english um like uh, we must have seen I, i'm programming to talk about uh, profiting from holidays and i want to thank some people but i won't call their names and i was inspired by them because i saw a number of people when holidays was approaching especially for people who are teachers yeah because it's true some of us never have holidays even as we are teachers or we are students we are already so busy that even when it is holiday we are we have something doing but some for some people it might not be the case i saw people writing online or oh, thinking about holiday what i will do what will i be doing i saw a lot of those things from young people coming up and i just thought that oh as i've been doing uh, videos about opportunities why not use this to talk about these opportunities and the best that or the kind of things that people can possibly do during holidays that can be uh, profitable to them as individuals and to our communities around us and that is why you would notice that today i've, I've uh, titled my uh, presentation as uh, profiting from holidays and then uh, online learning especially MOOCs and uh, the university of the people so let's first start with making the best use of holidays i think holidays for those who really have holiday because i know many people who never have holiday even when they go on leave they never on leave mm -hmm. and i happen to be one of those people <laughs> sorry for myself i'm sorry for people who are like me but uh, i think holiday is that time when for example you can volunteer and there are many ways we can volunteer because the first and most important thing about this life is not uh, putting a price tag to everything that we do i think the value the most important value of anything on this earth is not money money cannot buy a human life and that is why uh, I, I was discussing with one of my bro bigger brothers today and uh, my elder brothers and he reminded me of a quote i put online some time ago that the highest certificate on earth is not a phd no the highest certificate as far as i know is a good heart a good heart can bring every other thing to us so suppose that during the holidays you decide to volunteer especially now we we have situations where in uh, many children around have, are stranded some some children have not tested uh, school for for long and uh, we know about the situations both in uh, in our count in our country and elsewhere uh, you can be of help maybe to some just a few children in a community you can you can teach them some skills maybe you are a teacher and you are from a town in a place where uh, things have been worked moving on and then you, you find yourself in a place where things are not moving on you can be of some help to children there you can organize and maybe teach them some dance lessons teach them some uh, music lessons just individually to keep people busy and that's volunteering and then sometimes we can also have people who are even some people who are stranded in other situations maybe they are in the bushes or people who are in the hospitals and they may just need that you come around maybe just to greet them and to check how they are doing and maybe just buying some hands of banana or buying some fruits and bringing or harvesting from our farm and checking that is already something that can start and before you discover you are doing lots of things and charitable things and, and that's life moving like for us, I was saying, especially for teachers, this is time when you can dedicate time to teach children for free. We must not put a price tag to everything we do. We can teach those children. And even as we teach them, if you teach them free and you also let them understand that people can teach free, we can work free. It is already a something that at least out of 10 children you have taught for free, we can be sure that if you teach them for one week, two weeks, knowledge is never wasted. Even if you teach them just one day, 
if they, they will certainly learn something that will help them one day in one way or help another person through them. And then if you let them know that they too can be of help in future to other people, they can also teach, they can also do other forms of volunteering, they can help clean grandmama's uh, compound or house if grandmama lives alone, all these kind of things they are volunteering and they can be very helpful. So that's one suggestion. And then I think holidays do is time for invention and creation. Sometimes people think that uh, even when we say that a writer is born or a musician is born or a painter is born, well, they are born, but we have never really gone to a maternity and we see somebody being born with a pen and a book or somebody being born with a guitar. So which means that even when we say these people are being born, in reality, all of us live the maternity just uh, as babies and we are in some nice uh, uh, clothes that our parents have bought to us, but eventually in life we start certain things and so why not take the your holidays you can take holidays and meditate you can even go on some walks you can walk even to in, into a forest if you don't have something doing because i don't even want to talk about farming which is one of the best things we can do this holidays you can farm you can you can try to yeah you can farm you can help somebody farm then you can also even farm to get some money but i'm talking about things that might not even necessarily be about getting money immediately like invention you can discover during holiday that you can write some poems you can discover that you be, can be a good musician why not take some time off just go to one of the greenest greenest places or mountains you have around and sit there and relax and meditate and reflect and before long you can discover that maybe you're composing some nice songs or you're composing some nice lines that can become nice poems you write them or you can conceive a business idea and, and then very soon we may hear, hear, hear you talking about creating a startup, creating an organization. So all these things are possible during holidays if we feel idle. And I think idleness is the most productive time in the life of an individual if and only if we make good use of it. I mean idleness just in terms of, well, you have a regular activity and then comes a moment when you are not uh, doing that regular activity and then you discover that you are kind of okay well you have nothing to do let's call that idleness and then you can use that profitably to to trigger your mind all the minds we have all the brains we have can always go beyond the normal things they have been thinking there can be times like i remember a, a priest once told us about what something they used to observe in the seminary they call it the great silence and the great silence was a period during which they would spend one full hour and nobody talks to another. And they were in a seminary, many of them. But within an hour, nobody talks to another. But they are seeing each other, they are walking around, but you can't talk to another person. And during that time, you will discover that you think a lot. You think a lot. And to create and invent things, one of the things, I, for me, I think one of the best ways to be creative, whether as a writer, a musician, a business person, is to go from problems to go from problems because these uh, things we use today like facebook and other gadgets that uh, and applications that people have invented and computers or whatsoever those who invented them always started from observing a problem the most flourishing businesses are those businesses that start off by solving a problem you identify a problem in your community you observe you can move around just check you visit markets during holidays and see what is being sold and what is being bought so much and what is not selling so much and then you may see okay well you may see something which is not selling so much and then you observe it and you discover the reason why the thing is not selling so much and you discover that you can then invent a solution to that there are people who harvest the tomatoes and they get bad. You can think, and before long you discover you've invented a method of pre preserving the tomatoes to last for longer. So when we start by looking at problems, any and every problem has a potential, a possibility to give, to make us creative. To make us, by creativity, I mean all possible forms of creativity. It can be painting, it can be creating a business, it can be creating an NGO, but it is something that you are doing it not first for yourself, but first to solve a problem. And then in the process of solving that problem, if there are water shortages, like when I look or watch online, I've seen people single-handedly who have built dams in their communities. So I remember having watched one in, in Guinea, in Guinea Conakry, who has built a dam and the dam is supplying energy to, I think, about um, a thousand and something people in, in their locality and the person 
didn't even go to secondary school what did he do he learned everything on youtube i'm going to i'm coming to this point about learning online he learned all those things on youtube and he has applied them and now he eventually is not asking for funds and i discovered that even bbc was featuring him so that's somebody who has moved from nearly just nothing and he's already becoming so popular and being featured by the bbc and and he are there plans that he wants to make the dam bigger so that it because even the mayor of their locality is so impressed and is supporting the project and definitely some other people will come from other places and join him maybe invest in the thing and then he buys a bigger a turbine and then he generates electricity that may be able now to supply the whole municipality but it started off not because he really wanted to make money, but more or less because he noticed that there was no energy, people were living in the dark, people couldn't read their books, you couldn't watch TV, you couldn't watch football matches as we are watching the World Cup now. So he, he, he started off from there. It is good to start off from problems. When we start off from problems, by creating whatsoever thing we are creating or inventing in order to solve a problem, and then any other thing can come later, whether cognition, whether money, whether a prize, it can come later. In that way, we can we can be able to make uh, to gain a lot from the time that we think that we were idle, whether it is holiday time or not. And then even for those people who are idle during the holiday and they are teachers, we have to know that there are possibilities of teaching online nowadays. You can teach online and you earn a pay. You can teach online and you get money for that. Well, I'm not saying I've, I've been teaching, but I know I know authentic websites where you can apply. You teach English because there are some countries where, well, they may want to get teachers of English and they say they want only native speakers, but there are also countries that will say they want both native speakers and non-native speakers. And you can apply there and before long you discover that you've spent your time usefully by teaching or you may use that time to be learning. You may use that time to be learning either online or offline. I've seen a lot of opportunities people are advertising, for example, uh, occasions where you can come and learn how to do fishing, uh, or, I mean fish farming, occasions where you can come and learn how to create or, or to invent your own business. These are, these are opportunities happening. Some of them are in the form of workshops, some of them are in the form of seminars for one day, two days, three days, and you may register. Some are free, some people ask for money. Well, it, it doesn't matter. Different people have different reasons for why they would put a price tag. Sometimes it can, they may offer one day free and the, day, the next day they ask for some little kind of compensation. But just imagine that you attend those kind of things during holidays. Before long, you will not only learn something that could become another source of revenue alongside your regular job, but you can also be able to network and create friendships that are going to be lasting. Because another valuable thing in life is the people you know and who know you. I mean by this friends, not only family, the people you know and who know you, your network is your highest amount of riches, your highest amount of wealth. So creating those networks and knowing that tomorrow if you need to create a something or you need some kind of assistance, somebody can be there even just to comfort you, somebody can be there to advise you if you want to start a new kind of business or a new kind of organization, that's networking and it pays, it really, really, really pays. That being said, you can also learn during the holidays by learning online. So I'm not moving into the idea of learning online. And if you look at the title of uh, this video, I'm doing this live video, I'm doing, you will notice that uh, for the online learning, the first thing I mentioned there is MOOCs. You will see M-O-O-C-S. Uh, MOOC, a MOOC uh, stands for Massive open online course. I take it again. Massive open online course. They are courses like they are like school subjects designed by different platforms or designed by universities and higher education institutions throughout the world and then they are delivered to people through different platforms for free for free. I say completely free of charge. You only need to spend money to get data, to get data to connect and to have the, the right gadget because sometimes some of the courses you may not do them using a smartphone, you may not do them using a phone at all, you may not do them using even a tablet, you may only do them using, for example, a computer. 
but first and foremost we are we, are, we should be noting this for those who might not know but i know many of the us who are watching already know about what MOOCs are and why am i recommending MOOCs? i remember having said this on public tv sometime in the past that the reason why nowadays in many of our countries people indulge themselves in buying uh, fake certificates and we know about so many fake certificates from both known and very known people the reason why people get themselves into buying fake and fake certificates is because we have economies with a culture of certificates we have a, 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 a we have economies and nations and countries where when you go for an interview people start of asking you what are your qualifications that's not important that is not important you can learn because we have now what we call the democratization of knowledge more and more knowledge is free accessible free of charge online the most important thing is to get that knowledge not to get certificates from that knowledge if you get it the, the true test of it should not be the paper accompanying it as a certificate no it should be what you use it to do the only tangible proof the only concrete certificate is the action that you produce after having learned something if you cannot do something with knowledge nobody will see knowledge because you cannot just come and stand in a uh, in a crowd and say i'm intelligent i've gone to the university i have a master's degree i have a phd and the next question people will ask are so what <laughs> and so uh, do we drink it do we eat it do we sleep in it or in, on it or under it so so just imagine that but somebody who is able who doesn't even have that phd or masters but who has learned through youtube through MOOCs, through university of the people and university of the people is another very wonderful opportunity i will be presenting today but before i go there just imagine that somebody learns from all these places and doesn't even have a certificate but can do things like the person who, who built the dam so who will society need or listen more and pay attention to the person who has learned from different angles and is using it to help himself and his community or the person who has certificates so that's why i'm saying we should we can learn a lot from the MOOCs because in the MOOCs there's so many platforms very many platforms that are offering MOOC courses and MOOC courses every time if you visit the platforms you would discover so many the first thing I should say I don't know the total number of platforms that are offering MOOC courses but what I've done is I've gone and I've taken just about four of those of the most popular ones there are many other ones if you go to Google and you just even just enter top 10 or 10 most popular MOOC platforms you will see a lot of them but today I've chosen to talk about just about four of them they are Coursera and then there is future learn and there is edX and then I might also I would surely talk about Yali but it's not like a, a MOOC but it also has courses free of charge and so what happens is that there are two things about these MOOC courses when a university creates a course it hires professors who teach the course through the, the MOOC and when time comes for it they will advertise the course you people will sign in sometimes there is a course going on and they have sometimes even 70 or 80,000 or 100,000 uh, uh, candidates or learners because it is online so it's not like in a class where you will be thinking that no there is no space everybody sits in their room or, or wherever they want maybe on their veranda and they learn so when you learn there are two things if you just want your knowledge fine and good you gather your knowledge and go but now if you want a certificate which is signed if you really like certificates at the end of your course you can then pay a fee you can you pay a small fee only for the, your certificate to be signed and the certificate is usually signed by the university that conceived the MOOC course maybe together with the platform offering the the the, the, the course but you must be very reminded that it is not compulsory to pay you only pay if you need that paper to be posted to you but sometimes there are even more courses where you will be given an e-certificate free of charge an e-certificate of participation so why do and then people may only want to get to pay and go the extra mile of getting certificates if they come from a culture where certificates are very much valued or maybe you want to include it in your cv one day as you are looking for a job you want to include in your in your um cv that you took a MOOC course offered by Coursera uh, 
uh, designed and run by the University of Stanford or this university, you may want to do that so that your, uh, your CV can have some weight in that, ki in that kind of situation, then you can be forced to buy, to pay to get the certificate, the signed certificate given to you. Otherwise, it is if the most important thing is just to get the knowledge and apply it. So when you go there, for example, if you go to Coursera, you will find that all Coursera, Future Learn, Edex, and uh, Udacity, uh, Udemy, etc., etc., they have courses, many, many courses organized, arranged according to different areas of knowledge like the computer sciences, language learning, data and statistics, engineering, humanities, uh, arts and humanities, business and management. If you go, for example, now to Coursera, which is a CO, U R S E R dot O R G W W W dot C O R no C O U R S E R A dot O R G you will you'll be taken to the website of Coursera and there you will find that some of the most popular courses there now which are available or may soon be available include music production, coding, ICTs. Uh, creative writing, graphic designing, English uh, composition, etc., etc. And sometimes you can go and see a course which has already ended, but you may you may like to participate in that course in the future. You can even register there with your email and just sit and wait when that course becomes available because they will be sending updates to you every time to indicate that this this these are the courses we'll be offering from next week or from next month you can choose the ones you like and register so that we don't we don't longer keep ourselves and say oh i'm a person who only knows about literature i'm a person who only knows about chemistry you can be somebody who knows only about chemistry but during some time when you discover that you have some spare time you can use it online you use that time maybe to learn something you are a chemist by profession or you are an engineer you may decide to learn something in health sciences you may decide to learn something maybe in uh, a computer or something about creative writing or something about music production so people have learned coding from these free courses and they have created applications like which are as good as this Facebook that you and I are using today they, people have done that you can learn coding from there and you are able to, to, to do all these things so uh, you if you take a uh, and then what who, let me give you just some example universities that are partners with Coursera. We have Stanford University, we have Duke University, and we have the University of Michigan. These are very, very, very reputable and renowned universities in the US. And they are the institutional, the academic partners of Coursera. To tell you just to tell you how serious this idea of MOOCs is. How serious it is. Because if you take one of the courses here which is offered by one of these universities and you eventually want to get a certificate, it will be signed by one of these universities. Even if you don't want a certificate, the first thing you have to know is that these courses have been designed by them and they make sure that the, the courses are up to standard and they have qualified teachers, professors and lecturers, uh, professors and doctors who lecture in the courses. So you, if you take Future Learn, who, who are some of the partners of FutureLearn? FutureLearn is mainly a UK-based uh, platform, and so most of their uh, partner universities are in the, in the UK, like the University of Bristol, uh, Manchester Metropolitan University, and then even right uh, down to uh, Australia, you have the University of Sydney, and then in South Africa, you have the University of Stellenbosch. These are universities that are partners academic partners with future learn that design and run the courses you'll be doing on future learn and if you go to future learn now some of the courses you will see immediately even before you start browsing maybe under humanities data and statistics engineering business and this or that even just before you go to that first you will see some popular courses then now as i speak to you you will see technology and coding you will see health and psychology you will see business and management you will see exploring english language which is also subtitled language and culture then you will see it exploring the world of the english the english language teaching so which means that during holidays you can even be somebody you thought that you were idle and you were in your school because many take for example if you are a primary school teacher you teach every subject in your class there can be subjects where you feel that well you need some more knowledge I even even as we know that in every subject we can always need more knowledge but they are even some that we may need it more than we do in others. And then you say, okay, fine, maybe I need more. Maybe I'm, uh, I came from a science background in high school before I'm teaching. And maybe my English 
uh, needs more improvement, you can decide to go for a course like this one about exploring the world of teaching English. And you imagine you can learn from this course and you can also use it online to teach online and be paid if you want to do. Just like somebody who is a teacher of English may say, no, this, during this the holidays, I want to go out of my comfort zone. I want to try something technological. I want to learn coding. Maybe you learn coding and before long you discover you can code, you can do good things. And then you can gather some children in the community and you start sharing the knowledge with them. We never can tell. You may just be talking to those children and then the next time we have uh, somebody, an Isaac Newton, growing up from them. We never can tell at all. Not at all. We cannot tell. So they are, they are, these are just very little things that we can do and maybe they can be very helpful in great ways. And then there is this other one I mentioned. That for Future Learn, their website, all these things I'm mentioning, if you just go to Google, you can get them. But well, for purposes of clarity, um, Future Learn is uh, www.futurelearn.com. And then there is this one they call edX. It is E, D, and X. And then their partner universities are Harvard University, they are Massachusetts Institute of Technology, and then the University of California, Berkeley, etc., etc. And you will notice that there is Harvard, I've mentioned here, which is often, according to most classifications, the best university in the world. And they are the an educational partner of EDEX. So it means that through EDEX, you can sit in the comfort of your f home or in the comfort of your village or in the comfort of your town and you are able to learn a course that has been designed and delivered by Harvard University. And the most important thing will not even just be the Harvard in it, the Harvardness. No, the most important thing is the content of that course, what you learn from there and how you put it to use tomorrow in a way that can be helpful to you and to the people around you. So, um, and if you go there, yeah, I didn't, I didn't take courses from there by, by name. I just gathered the, the, the different areas, and I think I won't have to repeat that because I've been, been mentioning that time and again, the different areas like computer science, language, data, and statistics, etc. You will meet them there. And then there is YouTube. You can go to YouTube and you will learn a lot of things. Some people may decide during the holidays, okay, I want to become a very good cook. And you can just go to YouTube. Just imagine entering uh, videos of Cameroonian meals, videos of Nigerian meals, videos of Ghanaian meals, videos of British meals, videos of American meals, or of American cuisine, or French cuisine, or Canadian cuisine, or Senegalese cuisine. And you will learn a lot of things because you will find lots and lots and lots and lots of those videos there that people have taken time to explain. You will find the material, you find the recipe, you find what you need, how to compose them, how to cook them, and you are done. You can decide to go there and maybe learn even about building a dam. You can go and learn about building a helicopter. We never can tell. So all these things are available on YouTube. You can decide to go and learn. There are people who, like somebody like, um, uh, we have a very renowned uh, doctor, a uh, doctor of uh, musical editing and film editing in uh, in Boya. I can't remember his name now, but, uh, and, and, and he learned most of the things by himself, and most of them he learned from YouTube. You can learn on YouTube and you become an expert in editing films, in editing music, in doing many, 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 many more things. Another thing, Another thing, an idea is just coming. This one, I didn't even plan this one when I was planning this video. Like, because we remember that Africa is very absent, I should say. Africa is very absent online. Many countries of the world are so present online that once you go to Google, you go to YouTube, you will find lots of stops from those places. But one thing is that we come to the internet with this continuous mentality of being consumers. Just imagine that you use your time of holidays to rather create content and also upload onto YouTube and upload even to Wikipedia. Imagine writing, uh, investigating and writing a short description of your village. Your village might not be popular so much. I mean by popularity, I mean being popular online because I think every community and people are popular by their standards. Just imagine writing a short history of your people and putting it or maybe as a blog or on your Facebook or maybe doing a video doing a short video, a short drama, or filming a very nice culture or traditional dance in your locality and uploading it to YouTube or to, to Facebook. That is already creating content. Because one thing is that 
if we go by cal calculation by statistics we will discover that we have so many things in africa so many 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 things that are not even aspects of them have been mentioned online and we can start from there and before we discover we are already we are we have we have created that as a niche and it may even one day become a business because just take for example loggers how do they do bloggers just simply get gather that information they, they may look for a particular aspect of something in a community which is absent online and they start making sure that they verify they gather that information they verify it they edit it they write it they make it attractive and, and they publish it and before you know it people will start following them to read more about that thing so this is another dimension that has just come to my mind and I'm repeating this dimension of not only going to YouTube and Facebook to learn but also going to these places to create content there, to create content that can also help to put our continent, to put the African continent on the digital map. That being said, uh, I would like to uh, talk about the YALI program, the Young African Leaders Initiative. It's a program and initiative of uh, former U.S. President uh, Barack Obama, and uh, it trains young people to be the fu future leaders. <laughs> Though in many of our places, in many of our countries, uh, young people being future leaders remain just that, just that being future leaders until they grow and you get old and you die. You are you're living on promises that you are future leaders, and the future never comes for reasons that you and I know, which is really, really a pity that people are born, they grow up, they are being promised that they will be leaders in a certain future and then things, the future, because when the future is coming, it doesn't announce, the future is even now as we speak, the future comes and goes and people who are supposed to have given way to create possibilities for those future leaders to be future leaders don't do it and before we realize we turn and we see the future behind and there is no more future in front and the young people have never been leaders <laughs> I'm laughing but this is very serious it's a very serious problem on the African continent and we really have to seek ways to make sure that this does not continue to be a trademark of our continent so as I was saying it, for the YALI program, if you go to the website, which is www.yali.state.gov, you can learn so many things because they have courses. They have YALI courses on things like climate change, on things like uh, the protection and rights of girls and women, uh, things like protection of violent extremism, civic leadership, business and entrepreneurship, public management you can choose any course there for example if there are courses about how created the fundamentals of creating and running a business or the fundamentals of creating and running an NGO from there you can be able after because you learn from there and if you want a certificate you can answer questions and then if you pass you are, your certificate will be emailed to your email you will be sent to your email and you can print it if you want the certificate but in most cases and like I always say certificate is not the most important thing it should come last the most important thing should be getting that knowledge which is there free of charge and there was a time when I wanted to start translating yearly courses into French and then just luckily the people themselves the program the people who are running the yearly program translated so now yearly courses are the good news is that they are available both in English and in French so if you are from any African country that speaks French you can still learn do your yearly uh, courses and the good thing again is that the yearly courses are in different formats when you go to the yearly website the courses you can choose to learn by reading the material you can choose to learn by taking audio so that you just click and you sit and listen and take down some notes or you can choose to learn it by clicking where there is the video and you rather watch so that you see and hear and then and you learn and read and you can take down some notes and after that you can answer questions and get a certificate if you must get a certificate but like I say at the end of the day you may just decide to uh, use your knowledge and make good use and good meaning of it another thing which you can do things that I did and which sometimes have helped me very much not only me but also people around me I used to learn uh, uh, on this website of the yearly I took nearly all the yearly courses in fact I remember that uh, between 20, 2015 and 2016 I did nearly all courses present on the yearly website not because 
I really need them because most of the things I learn, I don't learn them for myself. I just learn them so that I have an idea and I can tell people and people who are interested in that because I have my own domains of things that I am very much interested in them. But I always try to go as far as I can do to know things in other aspects so that if I am talking to people, if I am giving advice, if I'm giving the, the, doing an orientation session, I can be able to tell people and then they may find it useful and helpful to them. So I did nearly all yearly courses and I, my certificates are there with me. And then I used to organize yearly learns because one thing you can do with the yearly courses is that you can, you can learn and after learning you decide, you discover that okay, there is, there is a small community of young people or people, not only young people, people of all ages around you, you've discovered that the knowledge you gain from there can be helpful to them. Then you organize a small event, you call that a yearly lunch, where you go and share your knowledge with them and also refer them to the website so that they themselves can go there and learn about other courses that they, they want. And now you can report that information back to the YALI uh, team administration in the US. And these two things are very helpful. I remember having done that. And then, because YALI doesn't just end there. He has two fellowship programs. There is the flagship program named after former South African uh, democracy icon uh, Nelson Mandela, alias Madiba, known as the Mandela Washington Fellowship. Even as I speak, there are many young people from Africa in different domains like civic leadership, business management, uh, business and, uh, and entrepreneurship and public management, I'm sorry, who have traveled to, to the U.S. and they'll be there for some time to learn in these different domains and share their experiences before they go back home and continue in the different areas of uh, activity. So they, this one thing you can just by starting off learning these courses or maybe starting off as I, I began by telling people that you, volunteerism can be very helpful or the idea that thinking in terms of problems and starting whether organizations or businesses with the aim of solving those problems can land us in different, different, different uh, good directions in life. So that if you not learn this way, you can find yourself going for the, the Mandela Washington Fellowship. Why not? You can apply for it and show proof of the activities you have been doing with your NGO or as a volunteer and making other young people volunteer alongside with you. And you can apply and before long, if you do things you are saying, they can be verified and they're true. Before long, you can discover You've had your chance to learn more and create more uh, networks and, and then you can continue to contribute your own quota to the development of uh, the continent. Uh, I am always looking at the bigger picture of the continent more than looking at the countries or nations or whatsoever. Now, apart from the Mandela Washington Fellowship, there is, there is, there is also what they call the uh, Yali Regional Leadership Centers. There is one for East Africa in Nairobi, Kenya. There is one for West Africa, Francophone West Africa in Dhaka, Senegal. There is one for West Africa, Anglophone in uh, Accra, Ghana. There is a second one for West Africa, Anglophone in Lagos, Nigeria. And then there is one for Southern Africa in, uh, I think, Pretoria in South Africa. And you can also apply and you are selected and you go there. And I happen to have been one among the, the pioneer batch of people who attended the one in Dhaka in Senegal. And it was just out of things like this, learning on the website, sharing with people, and then doing other ways, uh, things to share uh, f activities free of charge with people and helping them so that they can help themselves and help the others around. So this is just one example I'm giving. and. I was surprised, I was taken, I was selected, and when you are selected for any one of these, whether it is in, in the regional leadership centers in Africa or it is for the Mandela Washington Fellowship, you are, you are taken completely care of. Your flight tickets are paid for you, and where you will be lodged is taken care of, feeding is taken care of, and then not to talk about the knowledge you will gain from learning because all of these centers are attached to either universities or some other form of higher institution in those countries where young people are gathered or are selected based on the activities and the, the possible potential for impacting life around them and you go and you learn and share your knowledge and create networks that are lasting and very helpful. So that was it for the yearly program. Well, somebody is asking if I can explain what. Let me check. Oh, I like questions. Well, could, can you explain, uh, uh, what, which things I've just seen your question now, the question asking me, Lizette, you've asked me to explain what that is about, 
please can you specify that thing since i've been talking for long and i've sent you a question just now and i don't know which of the things you are referring to i like questions so much in fact i love them because when you make a, a video or whatsoever or you teach in class and people don't ask questions it's just like nothing is happening so please just let me know which thing you want me to explain more about it i think i'm i'm the happiest person now that i have a question because it was almost like a sermon so please let me know what you want me to explain further ah yali okay so i'm saying it is the, uh, it's an abbreviation it stands for the or an acronym it stands for the young african leadership initiative and it's a program that was uh, created by uh, former U.S. President Barack Obama uh, in, aimed at uh, empowering the next generation of African leaders. Even though the, the shameful thing we know is that in most of our countries, most of the times, we continue to be promised that we will be leaders of tomorrow and uh, every tomorrow has a tomorrow. <laughs> so, YALI, that is YALI, Young African Leaders Initiative, and it gives training to young people, I think, broadly speaking, in three areas in the area of entrepreneurship, in the area of civic uh, leadership. Civic leadership covers uh, areas like volunteerism and NGOs and non-profit organizations and charities. And then there is public management for people who work in the go with the governments of their country so that people who are public or civil servants, but not just civil servants in the domains of their profession, but civil servants who want to be part of administration. So uh, these are the areas in which YALI offers training. And I'm saying that YALI uh, training, first of all, is free of charge, available. Many courses are available in these domains and related domains like climate change and even, and even violent extremism on their website, which is yali.state.gov. And that any young person, wherever you are, you can go there and learn those courses and choose the one that interests you. You learn from there and don't even care. If, if you want to have a certificate, you can then answer some questions at the end of it and you get your certificate emailed to you. That's, that is if you need a certificate, but I don't think certificates are the most important thing. The most important thing is getting the knowledge so you can use it to do uh, the things that will be helpful to you and to people around you. And we never can tell, just from Yali, as I'm telling you, just from my interactions with the Yali website, I was able to be selected for this program that took me to Senegal. And I don't want to be thinking uh, only about the things I learned while I'm there, but also thinking about the bigger family that I also created right there. Because as, like I said, the most important thing about life is making friends, enlarging our network. Because as we say, we are here for other people. And uh, so, okay, after <laughs> after you watch party, okay, watch after. So, uh, Lee, have I answered your question? Uh, are you clear about Yali, or you still want me to uh, explain? But just before then, before you tell me if I should explain further, so I was saying that apart from the courses online, Yali has the flagship uh, program known as the Mandela Washington Fellowship, where they select, uh, each year they select, uh, I, I think it started off with 1,000 young people, but I think the number is increasing every year. So they select them from all African countries, and then they go to the U.S. for a certain amount of time. Sometimes it's about one month and two weeks. And they also receive training in U.S. institutions in these very areas I've no, uh, listed, like uh, civic leadership, public management, and uh, uh, business and entrepreneurship, so that they interact. If you are a business person, you want to create, you are already a business owner in, in your country in Africa, you will have the time to interact with people, young people too in the US who are creating businesses and you create contacts. Some of them may be interested in investing in your business, doing your business with you in your country of origin. You share your knowledge. If you have an NGO, maybe in the domain of health and reproductive health or in the domain of sexual and reproductive health, talking to young people about menstruation, and helping maybe to provide sanitary parts to people who are in need of them and sensitizing people on health things. You may also visit NGOs there that are doing those things. And so you see how they are doing it. You create friendships and partnerships with those NGOs. And there at the end of the program, uh, they will gather in Washington. Uh, I think during the time of Obama, they will gather in Washington and then Obama will visit them and deliver a speech and interact with them. But I don't know how it's going to be with the administration of President Donald Trump. Uh, uh, for as far as I know, as of now, I don't remember that he has uh, been to the closing ceremony, but he can go. Then there is also the, 
the regional leadership centers of Yali in Africa in different areas and they offer the same kind of training and you can attend and the good thing is that most often people who attend the regional from my observation there are many people once they attend the regional leadership training centers they end up also being selected for the Mandela Washington Fellowship I know many of my friends who either went to Ghana or to Dhaka and they have now gone to the US for the Mandela Washington and they they are, they are just starting. I think many people, uh, the official reception should be today in most of the universities there. So basically that's that. And so the regional leadership centers are grouped according to different uh, regions of Africa. There is one for Eastern Africa in Nairobi, Kenya, one for Southern Africa in South Africa, one for West Africa, Francophone, in, uh, uh, Francophone and Lusophone, meaning Francophone including also um, Portuguese and Spanish in Dakar in Senegal. And then there is one for West Africa, Anglophone in Accra, Ghana, and another one for West Africa, Anglophone in Lagos, Nigeria. So that being said, is there any other question I want to take or I can take? If there is any other question I can take, I will be happy to do so. Any need for clarifications? Does somebody want me to clarify something? Thank you so much, Lead. I like questions, and I'm happy you asked, and you've also confirmed that I've explained what you wanted. So, without any other question, I think I'm going to proceed. Now, before I end with uh, MOOCs and things that are similar to MOOCs, like this yearly program, especially the online courses, because I think the online courses of uh, uh, yearly can also be likened to MOOC courses. Uh, there is also for people who are language teachers or people who teach even in primary schools uh, in educational systems where one teacher teaches every subject, they may be interested in uh, learning um, or doing some kind of professional development in their domain of language. I would recommend something like they, that they can go to Facebook because one other way of making useful time from being present online and whether it is during holiday or not is liking pages of organizations and structures that offer things you are interested in so that people can like for example the page known as american uh, english for educators the page is the name of the page is american english for educators if you like that page you there will be a lot of free material for you there about english language teaching i remember for example it used to be uh, webinars and a webinar is simply uh, it sim simply means uh, a, a seminar which is run online and um, there used to be webinars and in places where there are U.S. embassies in different countries of the world, people, uh, English language teachers usually go and gather in the embassy on the day of the webinar and they will do, watch it there as a group and so that after they're watching they can make discussions about it. And then I just discovered recently I used to attend uh, uh, those events too and they are very helpful. I remember it, it was thanks to my participation in the webinars at the U.S. Embassy in Yaoundé that I, I once had the opportunity to have an online scholarship from the U.S. Department of State, which helped me to do a, an online course at the University of Oregon on the teaching, on how to teach using online resources. So you, 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 you see how you starting off from just little things where you just go to attend to gain small knowledge for yourself before long you discover that there are more opportunities that can come from there. So now the webinars have changed and they are using a much more better format. They are not presenting the webinars as live videos on Facebook. Can you imagine? That is wonderful. So wonderful. Because, for example, if we, are, we were to rely only on people going to embassies and watching, there will be, first of all, problems of space. If there are many people, imagine in a big town, just take the capital of one country in Africa, let's say we are in uh, Accra, and that there are English language teachers who want to attend. Suppose, 1,000 of them show up or, or 500 show up, there will be problems of space. But now, as it has been taken online, and many people did not even, or, or sometimes people know about it and they don't share with others, but now that it is available online, what happens is that people still go and watch in embassies, but even if you are in a place where there is no embassy, because embassies are found only in the capital cities of countries, but imagine you are in your country but you are not in the capital, it will be a wonderful opportunity to watch them now as live Facebook videos and you interact with the people who are presenting the, 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 the topics, then you answer questions, you create networks, and you also do uh, 
but by means of comments like these ones we are doing now you can also connect with other people from there so uh, now what happens is that if for example at the u.s embassy in yaoundé uh, teachers of english uh, in and around the towns uh, the, the city still gather and watch at the embassy just as they used to watch when they were webinars on a particular website but the good news is that now that they watch as live facebook live videos so meaning that you can be in any other city and you watch it on your own or you can even just gather some friends and colleagues because these are opportunities that sometimes people don't know about why not just imagine that you find yourself in a different part of your, your country which is not the capital suppose you are in uh, uh, Senegal and then, then the capital is Dakar but you find yourself in Ziegenshaw for example or another part of the country and then you gather your friends and you tell them that oh next Wednesday at this time there will be this live uh, uh, video on the American uh, for uh, American English for educators website on how to teach English using this 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 and then you can watch it and you it will help you to refresh your mind and uh, to continue to learn things learning never ends at all that was that about the American English live series not to talk about different websites online where we can learn things about language where we can learn things about any domain that interests mm -hmm. us including YouTube which I already talked about and uh, one last thing about learning things online before I go to the University of the people is that uh, using Google many people Google is one of that those places where everybody rushes to now for information but we have to be very careful because online online is just like offline offline we have the good and we have the bad online we have the good and we have the bad we have good information we have doubtful information so knowing which kind of websites to consult can be very important and helpful uh, while I am not saying that Wikipedia is not good, I think Wikipedia is good, but there are other ways of getting information more than just getting it from Wikipedia or from any first page that pops up on Google. So when we go, the most important thing is to be careful about the key terms of what we are looking for. Type some key terms in what you are looking for, and sometimes, for example, what I do is you type just those key terms if you prefer to read maybe journal articles that people have published or even dissertations people have published on that topic type that topic and if end it with the uh, with the with pdf so that you will filter and give you mainly documents that are in pdf and for for the most part documents in pdf will be articles and maybe dissertations things that are very authentic and you can read them or you want to refer a word it is not just sufficient to type it into google type into Google but you check if you are if where is the definition coming from is it coming from the Cambridge online dictionary is it coming from the Oxford online dictionary is it coming from the Webster uh, online dictionary so that you can be able to to be sure that you have information that is somehow authentic so that being said if there is any question any particular question about Google searching that somebody wants to ask the person can ask it now if not, I will then go to the University of the People. No question. Okay, thank you for your patience. Now, there is this university in the US. It is a non-profit university, still in line with the idea of the democratization of knowledge, the freeing of knowledge. We have the University of the People it is a non-profit university and it is accredited and it is tuition free by accreditation it means that it is authorized and recognized by the relevant educational uh, authorities in the u.s this is one thing and it's also very important for people who are interested in studying abroad if you are interested in studying abroad, especially in a country like the U.S., it's always good to check if the institution where you are interested in doing studies is an accredited institution. Because accreditation is a very important thing in, uh, in the U.S. system of education. And this university was created by people who thought, who knew this problem of many of us not being able to continue our education because of problems of money. That's why I am saying we should most of the times think about creating things to solve problems from there anything can come and from there came this idea of 
University of the People. And University of the People, to let you know how authentic it is, apart from the fact that it is credited, accredited, I'm sorry, accredited, it has university partners, four of them for now. It has University of Edinburgh in Scotland, in the UK. It has Yale Law School. It has New York University. And it has University of California, Berkeley. These are partner universities with the University of the People. And if you look at the board of trustees of the University of the People, you see the people and their profiles and where they have worked in different institutions around the world. You will now understand how authentic it is, not even before you go looking at the testimonials from students who have graduated from there and have found work. So I want to be going step by step. But then, as I talk about it being tuition free, I have to explain something before you somebody visits the website and starts saying, "Oh, you said it is tuition free and they're asking for money or this or that." We have to make things clear. And I'm very happy talking about this university. Whether people will interpret it as advertisement or not, the first thing is that it is a non-profit university. And what will you gain if you are advertising a non-profit thing? Non-profit things are non-profit, and then we also don't profit by. Uh, advertising them but I think the profit is from what people can gain outside from that university it is tuition free but when you are applying you will have to pay an admission fee that's the first thing you have to pay an admission fee but the good news again about paying an admission fee is that if you are in economic situations that are very difficult and you cannot be able to have that admission fee you can write and plead for them to waive it to grant you a fee waiver. I'm speaking and I have people I've recommended and who have already been admitted into the university. Some will soon be starting their courses and some are still in the process of being admitted. And I think some of them are watching me now but I don't want to tell them to own up. So, uh, and I'm so happy and I'm extremely happy. In fact, I'm one of the happiest persons now to know that I've recommended people and they have registered in that university and that they will soon study from there so that they can also give their testimonies by them. So maybe when we are doing another video, the people can or the people can also organize live videos and talk about that university for people to be able to take up that those possibilities and learn so that money should no longer be a barrier. So that movement should no longer be a barrier. It is not only about traveling and going to a particular country before you learn there. No, it is not just longer about being rich before you learn. No, it's a matter of you wanting to learn. I think the most important thing now in this world is if you want to learn, you will learn because there is enough of free knowledge nowadays as we speak. The next thing about the tuition freeness, which we have to note, apart from the fact that they will ask for an admission fee, is that normally at the University of the People, you have you learn, you take courses per semester, and at the end of the semester, you are supposed to pay uh, a fee, an exam fee. But the good news is that since it is a tuition free, mainly out there to help people who are in difficult situation, what happens is that that fee is not compulsory. And in most cases now, if you are still again unable to pay and you accept concrete reasons, you will be waived. And so they are not giving you a tuition scholarship. But there are sometimes people who are studying on the university at the University of the People, not just because because they had, didn't have money, but rather because maybe they are doing a, a, a full-time job. Maybe they have a full-time job and they don't have time to go back to school and they decide now that they will be learning online while they continue with their job. Those kind of people, if they have enough money, sometimes they may decide to pay the fee. And by paying that, it can help in the running of the school. And not to talk about other ways that maybe charities and organizations and foundations also try to fund and sponsor the university so that it can be able to pay the teachers who teach there. That being said, so these are the two ways in which you can find the mention of money as far as the University of the People is concerned. The first instance is when you are applying, you have to pay an application fee. The second instance is that normally you are supposed to pay a term fee, a term fee for or a trimester help fee for examination but which in most cases is waived and you are not giving a scholarship meaning that the scholarship cancels that fee and you go free of charge with your education so what is on offer at the university of the people they have uh, two kinds of degrees at the undergraduate level they have an associate degree an associate degree in the u.s system is a degree that is done in two years and then they also have bachelor's degree they have associate degrees and bachelor degrees in in three areas 
computer sciences, business administration, and health sciences. Then they have one graduate degree, and I should use this opportunity to, to say that what the U.S. and Canada call graduate level is what the U.K. and most of Europe call postgraduate, so that there should be no confusion. So undergrad, undergrad in the U.S and Canada is first degree or bachelor's degree level and then graduate is master's and PhD but in the UK and European system graduate level is first degree bachelor's level and postgraduate is master's and PhD so uh, at, at the moment the University of the people is offering only one uh, graduate or postgraduate course which is an MBA a master's of business administration so, and as, as far as I know, as of now, except I'm mistaken, uh, when you want to get the scholarships there, don't apply directly for a bachelor's degree. If, for example, you want to do a degree at the University of the People in Computer Science or in Business Administration or in Health Science, and you want to, and you would like to apply for the scholarship, please, it is good to start from an associate degree. Because as far as I know, except things have changed because a lot of things are also changing uh, they offer the scholarships mainly for the associate degree and the, 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 what uh, uh, what is the logic behind that the logic behind that is that when you do the associate degree for two years you already have a certificate with you with which you can find a job because many people have been able to graduate from that university in different parts of the world and after their graduation just their certificate plus the letters of recommendation that their professors have written uh, for them, they have now found a mission in real physical universities in the US, in Canada, in the UK, and other countries of the world. And like I'm saying already, I should repeat that there are four partner universities of the, this institution, which are Edinburgh in Scotland, UK, Yale Law School, and New York University, and University of California, Berkeley, all in the US, which means that this four universities already are so conversant, they know so much about University of the People that you can have so many chances of applying for a master's degree in these universities with your degree from the University of the People and you have chances of being accepted. Because there is still this controversy that sometimes in some institutions, people, some institutions may not want to accept a, a degree that you earned online, but I think that is gradually dying out because online learning has come to stay and no matter the initial resistance, people are finally giving way and it is coming to stay. So, when you now do your associate degree for two years, you can now maybe get a job and then you continue, you apply to continue for one more year and get a bachelor's degree. Because one thing we have to know is that you cannot get admissions into a master's program when you have an associate degree. So an associate degree is more or less something like a higher national diploma in, if I were to take it in the, if we were to compare it to some uh, kind of a, a, a post high school uh, certificates in a country like Cameroon, for example. So start off with an associate degree for example, people who do sciences, I encourage you so much. You can apply here and you do a mass, uh, uh, an associate degree in health sciences. And, you, uh, and there are other domains that are very much in high demand nowadays. Are from just these health sciences, you can specialize in nursing or you can specialize in reproductive and uh, maternity care and things of the sort, which can also lead you into having NGOs that cater for people in these domains as well as working. And you can eventually now, when you get a bachelor's degree in this area from that same university, you can then apply to do a master's degree, whether in your country of birth where you studied or maybe in another country of the world. You can have a scholarship. We never can tell. So uh, that is that about the University of the People. I think I want to open the floor for questions about the University of the People now. I will be very happy to answer questions, and those I cannot answer, I can only refer you to the website because it's a very comprehensive website. And I'm repeating, there are people watching me now whom I've recommended, and they have been admitted into the University of the People, and I'm super excited in their place. I'm more than excited as they might be. So, questions about University of the People? Doubts, anything? I want to clarify as far as I can. Then what I cannot? I will refer you to the website. Please.
please i'm waiting for your questions comments anything especially about university of the people And I, I was very glad the other day when I was reading an article about the University of the People on, um, I think it was in this newspaper known as the Hoft, is it the Hoft, the Hofting something post, I think, one of the most renowned international newspapers. And when you see newspapers like that featuring that university, that is another proof of how serious they are as an institution of learning. Not to talk about the fact that if you visit their website and you go to testimonials from students you would read a lot a lot of testimonies that students have given uh, who have studied there some who have studied and have been lucky to continue their studies even outside their countries thanks to having studied there and you can always email them if you have a question and they will be happy to reply uh, nearly after every three months or two months there is a term starting so if you want to apply just apply please never don't wait don't think that there is something like a deadline just apply if you apply now and by the time the process your application uh, the, the, there is no cost starting immediately maybe a course is starting in the next two months then you will be patient and start in those next two months and another good thing is that for most of the cases when you register there they need you to give proof of a certificate to show a certificate of English language competence but they are not so strict about that in the sense that if you come from a, an educational system that is English oriented or Anglo-Saxon and you can show proof with your high school certificate whether it is a GCE or whether it is a YEC or whatsoever they will be able to waive off the condition for the English and again even English is not a barrier at the University of the People because even if you don't show proof of uh, knowing English enough to study there because you'll be taking your classes online sometimes watching videos sometimes reading material and all the material will be free of charge you don't buy any textbook so even when you are you there is proof or there is evidence that your English still needs to be improved the good news is that they will admit you and the first course you will do will be an English course and when you do that course and you pass it when you validate that course you then move on and you start the courses that belong to your particular degree and then another thing is that it is possible that you can apply there even when you have already done one year of university education in your country <clears throat> and you may want to transfer your credits from your home university to university of the people they will ask you to send them your transcript if you send it and they compare it with their system and they think that it is up to what they expect they can also grant you even an automatic one year already done according to the certificate from your home country and you move on to the next level so i this is a wonderful university in the process of uh, democratizing knowledge. Well, thank you. I will hold on for about three to five minutes. If there is a question, I will answer. If there is any call for clarification, I will do. And if there is none, I will soon be signing off. Because I took about one hour, 30 minutes struggling to come on live. And it was not easy, meaning that I got exhausted even before this. And I've also been speaking, I think, for about an hour or so. Questions? But I'm not saying that I'm so tired to tell you questions. Questions will come and automatically give me energy. That one is clear. Let me wave. Let me wave. I'm waving. All of you who were watching, and my wife is thanking you for having watched. I hope I will be able to wave everybody. If I don't wave, you, please just know that it's because of time or that I didn't see the possibility of waving. So my waving is saying thank you for watching. If there is any question you have, please do not hesitate. You can ask your question even in French, eh? Même si vous avez une question en français, vous pouvez la poser. Je vais essayer de voir si mon français est encore bon pour pouvoir répondre à la question. Merci. Merci pour votre présence.
thank you so much all of you for having watched and if you think that the video is helpful please the best thing would be to share it so that some other person who did not have time now who might have been watching their football match can be able to watch it later and pass on and it can help one or two or three or four or five people thank you so much for having watched I'm thrilled I'm thrilled by the number of people who really watch thank you so much everybody as there is no question I have to sign off but do not uh, hesitate to type your questions as comments even when I've uh, uh, finish the video thank you so much for watching and uh, the new people who have just come i'm waiting to say thank you thank you so much please do not hesitate to write your questions in the comment box and if you uh, think that your question is something you want to ask and you don't want it to be so public please also feel free to send your question to me inbox and i will answer i will always be happy to answer you when time uh, permits thank you so much bye bye